morning everybody. Today I'm out on the South Downs in West Sussex photographing the sunrise. It's supposed to be spring but the temperatures drop below, well it's minus one right now so my fingers are freezing. Very very simple calm conditions this morning. Quite simply today's photography is about photographing the South Downs. If you saw my last video I was talking about whether or not I should share my locations. Today is a perfect example. This is not a touristy location. If I get out of the way you'll see I'm genuinely in the middle of nowhere. It's just short of half an hour walk from the nearest road. This is not a touristy location and I don't think I'm going to share where I am today but that's not going to turn it into a guessing game. If you figure out where I am, great and you'll get a few tips along the way but, but today is about the photography not the location. So what I realised about two or three years ago when I was revamping my website is that I don't actually have many landscapes. I was flicking through all of my images to upload them and the majority of them contain the sea. So technically there were seascapes and I was thinking uh, maybe I should create another category so I could have landscapes and seascapes but then I had black and white landscapes and then coloured landscapes and if you've got a website you probably had this situation before. You think I need to cut back the amount of images I've already got so what do I do? Um, and what I realised is I don't actually photograph enough landscapes with land in it because I'm just I'm just always drawn to the ocean. I'm always drawn to water, long exposures. Uh, so over the last two years, I've really been concentrating on photographing land. And with that, the light is way more important than if you're shooting seascapes. Because if you saw my last video, I was in New Haven. All you need is a bit of interest in the sky and you'll get reflections from the water to the sky. With a location like this, you can't photograph the scene without direct sunlight. There are a few clouds on the horizon this morning, but otherwise, within about five or 10 minutes, it's just blue sky. And that's not great conditions normally if you're photographing landscape photography, because you want a bit of interest in the sky. But with these particular locations, you can just crop out the sky. That's why I'm using a long lens. So if you're going to get into this genre of photography where you're just shooting the land, you're going to need a long lens. So you could either have a 70 to 200 that will, that will deal with most situations. If you've got a crop sensor camera, then that's gonna help you get an even longer range. Today I'm photographing with the 100 to 400. That just gives you a lot more flexibility without having to move your tripod and things. With a lens like that, it is very expensive and it's very heavy, but you're more likely to get unique compositions. If you were to come here and you've got a 100 to 400, you could photograph 10 to 20 different compositions. Somebody stood next to you without a long lens is not gonna get the same shot as you. Now, if you're watching this video and you think, oh, Ben, he gets so lucky. Every time he just goes out and photographs the location, he gets the perfect light. No, that is not correct. I have been here, this is my third time here this week. And I was greeted by some misty conditions, which were nice. Um, I'll put a photograph of that up here. First time to this location was last December and the conditions were beautiful. Uh, we had mist, uh, atmosphere. It looked like a scene from Tuscany. I got really, really giddy. I didn't film it because I was actually reviewing um, another product at the time. Because it was in the winter, the sun was rising over the sea. You were essentially shooting into the sun and that doesn't work for this location. So what I've done is I've tagged this location and I realised I had to return. Okay, uh, I'm going to have to stop talking because the sun is kicking off right now. I'll spin the camera around and I'll show you what the scene is now looking like. The direct sunlight, now that it's punched through the clouds, is totally changing the composition and the atmosphere. Right, this will give you an idea of the composition. This is <clears throat> roughly a 50 millimeter lens, so this is not the composition. But the composition is right in there. You can see how contrasty the sky is here. I'm completely cutting out the sky, just really, really cropping in and to the land. And because I've come at the right time of the year, the sun is just out of frame over here and therefore I'm not shooting into the sun, it's not creating any contrast issues. No grads, no filters, nothing whatsoever because I'm just concentrating on that centre part of the image. Simple. Can you hear how loud those birds are? So I'm trying to juggle too many things, I'm trying to take some photographs and make a video about this. Let's talk about settings. So at the moment I'm shooting at around 150 millimetres. So if you've only got a 70 to 200, for this example here, 70 to 200 is enough. 
you don't need the 100 400. I'm shooting at f11 because if you use a long telephoto lens, depth of field becomes even shallower. Everything in my composition is pretty much the same distance from the camera. However, f11, I normally keep it between f8 and f11 because that's, that's the sweet spot for most lenses. Uh, my ISO is at 100 and I've got a shutter speed of 1 13th of a second at the moment. There's a light breeze, so you just gotta make sure that you zoom into your images and make sure they're crisp. And although this lens does have stabilization, when I put it on a tripod, you should turn the stabilization off because sometimes that can fight with the camera being still and it may actually have a worsening effect on your images. The sun is just out of frame, but I am actually shielding the lens hood with my hand a little bit like this because I could see a tiny little bit of lens flare. In the shots where I do include just a slither of the sky, I'm having to bracket that. Shooting into the uh, sun with filters, like I did in my last video, and I said, this is a bad idea, don't do it. Uh, it just increases the uh, lens flare, and if you've got any dust or anything on your lens or your filters, it just uh, exacerbates the situation. So I've got a two second timer. Good, that's all in the histogram. Now, those of you who have followed me for a long time don't think I've given up on my Canon whatsoever, no. Just because I knew that this was gonna be a high dynamic situation, my Sony a7 III has got more dynamic range than my Canon. So yeah, this is a bit offensive to put a Canon lens on a Sony body, but I'm kind of straddling two systems. So today, I decided to bring out the Sony, but, but adapting for landscape photography doesn't really matter because it's shooting in manual focus I'm not using stabilization. There's no real benefit in using a Sony lens in this situation. Canon L series lenses, they're sweet anyway, so it's not like you're compromising on quality at all. I've switched to the Sony so that I can video the actual scene. If I were to zoom out here, then you're gonna quickly see the whole scene gets very bright. This is the scene at 100 millimeters, and you can see I'm concentrating on this part of the shot here. But if I wanted to, if I just wanted to say, oh, I want that bit, which I'm actually quite excited about now, I might photograph that in a second. So I've not entirely decided how I'm gonna do the location sharing, but at the moment, I think I'm going to share popular locations, the what three words, exactly where I stood and took the photographs. Essentially, this isn't my location. Another photographer has given me this location. It's not mine to share, plus it's it's out in the middle of nowhere, so I don't think this is a location that I should be sharing. With the more popular locations, I am more than happy to give you the exact position where I stood, where my tripod stood, but I'm not 100% decided. I'll probably just change it up as I feel like it. This is beautiful, just being out in the South Downs. Not much to complain about. Now, some of you have quite rightly pointed out in some of my previous videos, I do rush through the photographs a bit too quickly. Hopefully today's been a bit of a nicer pace. I've talked to you through the settings, the lenses, the cameras, why I'm photographing what I am. YouTube is very difficult. People have got very short attention spans. So some people will quite happily sit through a 20 minute video. Other people watch five minutes and they've had enough, they're off. So I've got to kind of balance it. I think the sweet spot is around 10 minutes. We are well into 2021 and I haven't photographed a single sunset yet. How disappointing is that? But the clocks have changed, summer is on its way. So I should have enough time soon to go to work, finish, get home, put the kids to bed and then go out and shoot some sunsets. So that's gonna double my opportunities, but sunrises right now, they're getting early. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Nothing epic, but like I said at the outset, this video is gonna be a nice, calm one. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.